Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Big Agnes Fly Creek HV UL2 Bikepacking Tent. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO98. So, let's talk about bike camping. Really the biggest challenge to bike camping is finding equipment that is like small and light enough to carry with you on your bike. Once you've solved that problem, that's 80% of the work. So this tent is a tent that's designed specifically for bike camping, and we'll get into uh, you know what features it, it has to accommodate that. It costs $380, which is it's a, a bit of cash. Uh, I, I did hesitate a little bit when I saw that price tag, but it seemed like the best option for me for you know the kind of bike camping that I want to do. All right, so let's talk about size. So when I was looking around in REI to find a tent that would work for the bike camping that I want to do, you know, I, I saw this one listed on their shelf that like, you know, it was specifically meant for bike camping, um, but they didn't have one on the shelf. And so I had to ask a, a sales associate to like go back into the back and grab one for me. And when he came back from there, he just like casually tossed this little package to me and I caught it and I looked at him and I was like, is this the whole thing? Is this it? Because it's so small and I love it. So this is a variant of a backpacking tent that Big Agnes makes, but they have modified it a little bit. Um, mostly they modified the tent pole because as you can imagine, like a lot of the things that you're optimizing for bike packing and backpacking are pretty similar, right? You want it to be light, you want it to be able to roll down really small. Um, but when you are backpacking, um, your backpack can accommodate a, you know, a much wider object than your like panniers can accommodate if you're on a bike. So what Big Agnes did here was they took the um, tent poles and they uh, divided them into smaller segments. So these are 30 centimeters, 12 inches long, perfect size to be able to just like hang them from like the front of your handlebars um, or they're even small enough to just like slide into, um, a, you know, a decent size pannier. Love it. And so because like it's also a backpacking tent, it's nice and light, very compact. Love it, love it, love it. So how big is the tent when you actually uh, set it up? It is a two-person tent, but as uh, Savannah said that the, the first time that I pitched the tent uh, in our living room, uh, she exclaimed, that's only a two-person tent if those two people are actively f***ing. So yeah, I can fit myself and like all four of my panniers uh, inside this tent very comfortably, or you can fit two people and practically none of your gear into the tent with you. So it does have a couple of like little mesh hammocks that are built into like kind of the top of the um, tent. They kind of like hang from the ceiling. Um, so you can get a little bit of gear in there with you, but there's like, there is no extra floor space in there. One of the hammocks is kind of like down by your knees and it's big enough to fit like, you know, gloves, a hat, stuff like that. Um, the other hammock is like directly above your head when you're laying down in the uh, tent and you can fit maybe like a couple of phones up there. Um, that's about it. Hilariously, this uh, tent also has, in the area between like the ceiling of the tent and the rain fly itself, uh, there's a little gap, and uh, they have a little elastic band in there um, with an icon that tells you, like, oh yeah, you can stow your bike helmet up here in this area, uh, which I find very funny because, like, I don't know, why do I need a special place to stow my bike helmet? I'll just hang it from the handlebars on my bike. That's fine. Yeah, there's enough room in this tent to like sit up um, when you're in there, but like there's not really room to do anything else in there. So how easy is it to set up this tent? I find it very, very easy. Um, when I'm like by myself, uh, it takes me maybe 10 minutes to set it up. That's it. There's no need to like slide any poles through big long sleeves that are going to get bunched up. All of the poles are actually like attached to each other at like a tri-angled nexus that all of the uh, poles connect to uh, and then you just uh, attach those to the corners of the tent and then there's little clips that 
um, that raise the tent up to hang from the poles. Uh, there are a couple of the corners of the tent uh, down by your feet. Those corners rely on stakes in, uh, to like hold themselves out and and you know away from your feet instead of like relying on the tension of one of the poles so you do need to like make sure that you find a spot that has ground that's like suitable for your stakes to go into you won't be able to really like properly set up this tent just by using the poles and no stakes so how weatherproof is this tent? Um, I have been rained on pretty darn hard while uh, in this tent. And for reference, the rain was so heavy and loud that like I had to actually put in my headphones uh, in order to get some sleep. And uh, I put on my headphones and then started playing like the white noise track that I have downloaded um, to help me, you know, drown out all the noise from outside. And ironically, the white noise track that I use is the sound of rain in a forest. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my mind a little bit. So, even with that amount of rain, uh, my sleeping bag got a little bit wet down by my feet, but, like, it wasn't wet enough to, like, soak through to the inside. Um, So, my feet never got wet. Yeah, uh, we had a little bit of, like, rain that kind of, you know, would... would, um, like managed to soak through the uh the the rain fly and you know kind of splash us in the face a little bit um but like it wasn't it wasn't uh, a whole lot if it's warm out and you know that it's not going to rain overnight um you can get a heck of a lot of fresh air uh with this tent by just leaving the rain fly off because most of the tent body is just mesh so that's really nice um but you know that does mean that like if you if you want to maintain any amount of warmth inside the tent, you, you're going to have to have that uh, that rain fly on. Uh, the floor does do a decent job of not letting too much water like soak through. Um, but if you if you're really concerned about that, if you really want to avoid that, um, they do sell a footprint for the tent that comes separate. I haven't really felt the need yet to get that um, because you know it, it is more it would take up more space and weight. Um, and, you know, I just, I haven't had that much of a problem. Durability. All the materials that uh, this thing is made of seem pretty durable. I haven't had, uh, you know, any any problems with, like, wear and tear. I've only used it a handful of times, though. So, you know, that's something that, like, you only really get to know uh, over the course of many, many days and weeks uh, of use. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it all seems durable enough. Um, and it does come with a little splint um, for the tent poles. Um, so it's this it's this uh, metal segment that um, it's a tube that's a little bit wider than the um, tent poles themselves. Um, so if you do break a tent pole during a trip, you can like slip that splint on over the uh, over the tent pole, and then you can still keep using the tent. It's a little bit deformed, um, but you can keep using that until you get it fixed. I managed to have to do that on the very first trip that I took with this tent. It was really embarrassing and uh luckily like big agnes does have a repair program for all of their products so you can contact them and uh and and you know get um just that specific part that you that you broke um replaced i'm sure that that would have cost me money but luckily I bought this tent from REI, and they are super cool. Uh, I brought back the the tent to them uh, after the trip, and they actually replaced that tent pole segment for free as though it were still covered under warranty, even though I'm pretty sure that falling on your tent is not something that's covered under warranty. So, final thoughts. I like this tent a lot. It, it's about as compact as I could hope for without, like, really resorting to a bivy sack. And I don't think that I'm really ready to give up, like, the ability to sit up in inside my tent. So, yeah, I love this tent. Uh, I'm going to keep using it for as long as I possibly can. Even though it's a two-person tent... I do really like using it during solo trips as well because, like, you know, I then I can have enough room in the tent with me uh, to have all of my all of my panniers, and I can, you know, like, 
you know, if I have to reach into one of the bags and, and grab something like, hey, it's right there. I don't even have to like worry about going outside and finding it. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO98. If you uh, have thoughts about bike camping, tents, and things like that, feel free to uh, join our other listeners in discussing that on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. Second Opinion is supported by listeners like Quentin Pongratz, who voluntarily joined us on Patreon. If you would like to help out as well and get some cool perks along the way, you can find us at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.